Mabuhay and welcome to our class in Earth and Life Science. I am your Sir Kennedy and I'm hoping you are 100% ready for our discussion. Earth and Life Science, Quarter 2, Week 3, Perpetuation of Life by yours truly, Kennedy of Bagay, Teacher 2 of Solid Solid National High School. Every living thing on earth from tiniest one-celled organism to the biggest animals in trees is the result of reproduction. Organisms can continue living even if they never reproduce. However, without reproduction, life will not be able to perpetuate itself. This video lesson will serve as a guide to describe the different ways of how representative animals reproduce. It will give insights on why organisms need to reproduce and how are they going to do it. With the help of this visual lesson, learners are expected to describe the different ways of how representative animals reproduce. So this is our most essential learning competency that you learners needed to acquire as you go on on this video lesson. So let us proceed with our discussion. Reproduction in the Animal Kingdom There are varieties of organisms in animal kingdom possessing different modes of reproduction depending on the complexity of their morphology and physiology. There are two types of reproduction that exist in living organisms, namely asexual and sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is common among lower forms of animals, while sexual reproduction can be found in more complex animals. As based in the diagram class, reproduction has two types, namely asexual and sexual reproduction. For asexual reproduction, it is divided into three types, which are fission, fragmentation, and budding. While for sexual reproduction, it is divided also into two types, which is external fertilization and internal fertilization. For internal fertilization, it is further subdivided into three types, which is oviparity, viviparity, and ovuviviparity. So, for better understanding, let us discuss them one by one. The first type of reproduction that we are going to discuss is asexual reproduction. So, asexual reproduction is defined as the formation of new individuals from the cells of a single parent. Meaning, it does not need two parents to produce an individual. The offspring produces the exact copy of the parent animal. Most common forms are fission, fragmentation, and budding. In asexual reproduction, we may call the offspring as a clone since they share the same chromosomes with the single parent. The first type of asexual reproduction is fission or also known as binary fission. Fission is a type of asexual reproduction wherein two individuals will be formed as the parent divides in half. Common examples of this are bacteria, archaea, and cyanobacteria from prokaryotes, as well as amoeba and paramecium from eukaryotes, uses binary fission as their primary mode of reproduction. Some cell organelles like mitochondria also undergo cell division by this process, which is the binary fission. The second type of asexual reproduction is fragmentation. The breaking of body parts into fragments is always followed by regeneration and regrowth of lost parts. Fragmentation is found in both animals and plants. Fungi, lichens, molds, worms, sea stars, flatworms, and sponges are some of the common examples where the mode of reproduction occurs via fragmentation. So as you can see in the picture, this is an example of fragmentation 
wherein a C star is fragmented and then the fragment becomes another organism coming from the parent one. So this is an example of fragmentation. The third type of asexual reproduction is budding. This happens when an outgrowth called a bud grows and develops from the parent animal and would eventually separate to become a new individual. Few unicellular organisms such as bacteria, fungi like yeast, and protozoa, a number of metazoan animals including certain cnidarian species like hydra, and various plants undergo to this type of asexual reproduction which is budding. The second type of reproduction is sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is the perpetuation of a new organism from two organisms with the use of gametes. In this process, male gametes, which is the sperm cell, fuses with a female gamete known as the egg cell to form a diploid cell called zygote containing two sets of chromosomes. During sexual reproduction, genetic material contained in their chromosomes combine to produce genetically diverse offspring that is different from both parents. Humans, frogs, fish, cats, and dogs all reproduce through the method of sexual reproduction. The first type of sexual reproduction is external fertilization. So what is external fertilization? External fertilization class is the union of egg and sperm cells that occurs outside the female reproductive tract. This is common among most species bony fish and amphibians. As shown in the illustration, the clasping of the male frog, this is the male frog, which induces the female frogs, this is the female frog, which is larger than the male frog, to release eggs over which the male releases its sperm. And Outside, there will be fertilization that will happen, and that is the external fertilization. The second type of sexual reproduction is internal fertilization. Internal fertilization class is the union of an egg and sperm cell during sexual reproduction inside the female body. Internal fertilization brings more control to the female with reproduction. For internal fertilization to happen, there needs to be a method for the male to introduce the sperm into the female's reproductive tract. And internal fertilization has three types, namely, the first one is oviparity, the second one is ovoviviparity, and the third type is viviparity. So we are going to discuss them one by one. So the first one is oviparity. Oviparous animals release eggs outside the body after fertilization and it would complete its development outside the mother's body. The egg would receive its nourishment through its yolk. This is found in some bony and cartilaginous fish, most reptiles, some amphibians, a few mammals which we call monotremes, and all birds just like the chick as seen in the picture. The second type of internal fertilization is ovoviviparity. Ovoviviparous animals produce eggs like oviparous animals but they don't release outside. Ovoviviparous are those animals that grow inside the pregnant womb but at the same time are inside an egg. So they share common characteristic with viviparous and oviparous. The egg can hatch inside the womb or be expelled at birth. An example of an oviviparous animal is a manta ray as seen in the picture. And the last type of internal fertilization is viviparity. 
In viviparous animals, the embryo develops to young ones within the mother. After the internal fertilization, in viviparous animals, the embryo develops in the mother itself. The mother's body provides all the nutrients or nourishes to the embryo and provides protection to the growing fetus. All mammals except platypus and echidnas are viviparous animals. So some examples of viviparous animals include your cow, cat, donkey, dog, monkey, and giraffe. It also includes all human beings. They are considered as viviparous animals. Now that you have the knowledge and understanding, I believe you are now ready for our activity. So our activity is entitled as Reveal Me. So reveal the terms in grid by replacing the number with the corresponding vowel. So our vowels are A which corresponds to number 1, E, which corresponds to number 2, I, which corresponds to 3, O, which corresponds to 4, and U, which corresponds to 5. So you are now ready. Let us proceed with item number 1. So you will be given 5 seconds to answer. So for the first item, there are 4 vowels that are missing. The clue is... Single individual produces offspring. For number two, there are five vowels that are missing, and for the clue, pieces of the parent breaks off and develops into a new animal. What is the word? For number 3, there are two vowels that are missing. And for the clue, process in which an organism divides into two and grow into a new organism. And for the last number, there are also two vowels that are missing. And for the clue, process outgrowth or callus projecting from the parent and eventually buds off. So that's it. Let us check your answers. See to it that you exercise honesty when checking your answers. For number one, single individual produces offspring, and the answer is asexual. For number two, pieces of the parent breaks off and develops into a new animal. So the answer is fragmentation. And for number three, process in which an organism divides into two and grow into a new organism? So the answer should be binary. For the last item, process outgrowth or callus projecting with the parent and eventually buds off, the answer should be budding. So I hope with this four item activity, you got the correct answers in all items for you to say that you have acquired the knowledge that you need for this topic. So let's have another activity on our topic which is entitled as Fill In. Complete the description of the illustration in the left column by choosing the terms in the table. So these are the words that you will going to choose. First word is inside, the second word is egg, the third word is parent, and the last word is young. So let us proceed with item number one.
for item number one, oviparous animals that lay their blank with little or no other embryonic development within the blank. Five seconds. Last item, viviparous animals bringing forth live blank that have developed blank the body of the parent. So another five seconds. So let's check your answers. See to it that you still exercise honesty in checking. So the first one is oviparous animals that lay their egg with little or no other embryonic development within the parent. So the words are egg and parent. So automatically for item number two, the words are viviparous animals bringing forth live young that have developed inside the body of the parent. So the two words that are needed are young and inside. So I hope with this activity, you have finally acquired our most essential learning competency for you to proceed with our next topic. Now for more activities, exercises, and assessment, you may answer other activities, exercises, as well as the assessment that are included in your module or answer the prepared activities test or performance task given by your teacher. Yes, it's time to say goodbye for now, my dear learners. See you next time for more discussions on Earth and Life and Science. Once again, this is your Sir Kennedy, always reminding you, stay healthy and stay safe.